Fact or myth, do babies outgrow cross size? If you're interested in finding out the answer to this, keep watching. I am Dr. Rupa, board certified pediatric ophthalmologist, and this is what I do. This is my area of expertise. I'm an ophthalmologist and eye surgeon, and then I've done extra training in pediatric ophthalmology. So the main surgery that I do is eye muscle surgery for strabismus. Strabismus just means misaligned eyes. You can have eyes that are crossed in or wandering out or even vertically misaligned, and that is what I do surgery for. In fact, you can see pictures like this of some of my post-op patients where I have uncrossed these babies' eyes. So this is obviously a topic that's really near and dear to my heart, but let's get back to it. Is it true or is it false? Well, it's actually false. This is a myth that babies will outgrow crossed eyes with one small caveat. So let's explain the general thing first. When babies are developing, they need to have good vision in both eyes and with the eyes seeing straight. Because if the eyes are crossed in, what happens is the brain starts to shut off the eye that's crossing. In babies that have something called congenital esotropia, which means eye crossing that occurs before the age of six months, then oftentimes their brain is shutting off one eye or the other. Sometimes it can be both eyes that are crossed. Sometimes it's one eye and then switches to the other eye. Sometimes it's just one eye but more typically it alternates between the two eyes. And this is a problem because we want babies to develop good binocular vision, meaning we want them to be able to see with both eyes open and develop stereoacuity, or in layman's terms, depth perception. So no amount of eye crossing past the age of three months is normal. Do not let anyone tell you that your baby is going to outgrow those crossed eyes. And I'm sorry if that's what your pediatrician or your friend down the street has said, it's not true. Make sure to get a referral to a pediatric ophthalmologist. And if your baby is younger than three months and you're still concerned, see a pediatric ophthalmologist anyway. I have a lot of patients that come to me and the parents are worried about eye crossing in their kids. And I would much rather be able to reassure a parent than the opposite to be true, where a parent waited on it because they were told that their child's eyes were going to outgrow this, that this was just a face. It's not a face. The eyes are supposed to be straight and it's really, really important for normal depth perception development. So. Actually, the studies have shown in babies with congenital esotropia, so that's esotropia eyes crossing before the age of six months, that the sooner that we operate, the better. And that is the treatment for congenital esotropia. You can't do glasses for that. You're not gonna do eye exercises, and usually you're not really gonna do too much patching. The end all be all treatment is eye muscle surgery. And studies have actually shown that when you do that surgery, before the age of one year, that those babies have a better chance of developing depth perception. When you wait and do it later, then those kids might have perfect 20-20 vision in each eye, but they may not develop depth perception. So that's why we recommend early surgical intervention for these babies. Now, okay, where did this myth start that babies are going to outgrow out cross eyes? Well, there's a couple of reasons that I believe this myth started. And that's why I said there's one small caveat to this. The first is when babies are very, very young, just like they're learning to use their arms and their legs, you might see some transient periods of intermittent eye crossing, not constant eye crossing, intermittent. And sometimes that can even be a sign of something called delayed visual maturation. But again, if you're worried, I really would rather that you see a pediatric ophthalmologist and get their opinion rather than just Googling it and find, well, I think the baby's gonna be okay. You obviously don't wanna take chances with your child. But anything past the age of three months, even if it's just intermittent or transient, you should see a pediatric ophthalmologist because that is not normal. But there is a small subset of babies who have a little bit of eye crossing when they're just born or within the first month or two that does resolve with time, but be on the safe side and get your baby checked. The second reason that I believe this myth started is because of something called pseudostrabismus. What's that? Well, remember, strabismus means misaligned eyes and pseudo means fake. So it's the false appearance of eye crossing. 
what would give you the false appearance of eye crossing? Well, oftentimes when parents are looking at a child and sometimes even pediatricians, when they're trying to assess if the eyes are crossed, they're looking at how much of the white is visible in the inner corners. So they feel like if the eye is crossed in and they see less white in the inner corner of the eye, that means the eyes are crossed. But that's not necessarily always true. There are a lot of babies that have a very flat nose bridge and what we call epicanthal folds, where the skin covers more of the white. And sometimes the skin can cover an asymmetric amount of the white on one side versus the other. When you actually see a pediatric ophthalmologist, we have other tests that we can do in the office. One is called the cover on cover test. We're assessing the pupillary light reflex. And so what we're doing is we're not just going off based on the appearance of how much white is showing. We're actually seeing if the eye is shifting in realignment when we cover it. A quick and dirty way for you to see this at home is to take a photograph of your child's eyes and make sure you're using a flash, make sure your child is head on, and then pinch and zoom. If you see that the light flash is perfectly centered in the pupil of the eye, that's the black part of the eye, and you're not being thrown off by how much white is visible, and if it's perfectly centered in the pupil, that means there's no real eye crossing. But again, this can be a really difficult determination to make, and so it's best to see your pediatric ophthalmologist. Here in Hawaii, I see a ton of patients for this because oftentimes a lot of kids that have Asian features like my own children or half Chinese, my oldest one had those epicanthal folds. He looked as if there was less white on one side than the other. So some people might have been fooled into thinking he had eye crossing, which he didn't. So I think this is where that myth started because as a child's face develops, they start to lose that cross-eyed appearance because their nasal bridge develops, right? They start to develop a little bit of a pointy nose. It's not as cute as of a little button nose. They develop a nasal bridge. So as that pinches in, that's another thing you can do. Sometimes I try to do this in the office. I, I pinch in or I just kind of show the parents, look, their baby's gonna lose their cross-eyed appearance once their nose develops, but that's different. That's not real eye crossing, but I think some people mistakenly think it is. So when their child loses that cross-eyed appearance, they they think that, oh, my child outgrew their cross-eyedness. It's not true. The baby was actually never cross-eyed to start with. So we're talking about babies, babies typically less than one year old. But if you look at toddlers, toddlers anywhere from 18 months to about three years old can develop something called accommodative esotropia. And what that means is that the kids are very farsighted and they aren't able to focus up close without their eyes crossing in. So for that, I don't recommend surgery. I actually give a pair of glasses. And oftentimes the natural course for that is when the kids get older, you know, like middle school age, they can eventually get out of their glasses and they have enough control over their eye muscles to keep their eyes straight. But again, that's a kind of different kettle of fish. It's not exactly the congenital esotropia that most parents are worried about. So if your kid's a toddler and you're noticing some eye crossing when they're reading or coloring, that might be something that we treat with just glasses. But babies that are born with crossed eyes that don't uh, resolve on their own by the age of three months, definitely wanna go in to see your pediatric ophthalmologist because that is a myth that they're going to outgrow it on its own. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have any other eye myth busters you want me to tackle, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to do these. These are great for me and they're a lot of fun. So until next time, I will see you soon. Bye for now.